I guess we can start with some Sharks news. Uh, the only bit of Sharks news that was really left to happen, uh, Matt Nieto signed a one-year deal for $7,735,000 for a one-year, one-way deal. Um, what, do you, what, do you, what do you guys think? Just any general thoughts on this deal before we kind of pick it apart? Uh, Eric? Since you're the guest, I should actually uh, yeah. introduce everybody. Hey, yeah, there you go. Uh, hey, that's Eric. Uh, he had to be on the shore. He would fire me. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's basically I just you know I have no control anymore. Uh, with me, as always, it seems is Kevin Lacey. I'm sorry, everyone out there. You're stuck with me again. Oh man, the worst. And back from vacation, the uh, lock, the lack of flow with Drew Weber, which I'm very disappointed with. I miss my hair too, man. I gotta, I'll work back on it. <laughs> okay. All right. that's, that's by the way, that's Patrick O'Sullivan's favorite guy right there. Oh, he um, loves me. Patrick O'Sullivan, O'Sullivan loves me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah. So anyway, uh, Eric, go ahead. Start. Any general thoughts on this deal off the well, top of the? Well, when you said seven thousand, I was like, wow, how the heck did the league okay that? Um, but even then, seven hundred. 85 is... 35. 35, even better. $50,000 better. That's $50,000 we'll, we'll have to save on rally towels for the playoffs next year. <laughs> I, all I'm saying is it, it, it's a great deal, but like like I said off the air before we went on, the last two deals with Hurdle and Nieto are like a uh, don't tell me that you deserve this. Show me you deserve a better deal. And... and it's a huge incentive to a make or break, especially for uh, Nieto. Drew, what do you think? I think it's a fantastic deal. I know a lot of people, you know, don't like Matt Nieto because of his plus minus or because of his lack of production, but he is a pretty decent defensive forward. I mean, he's relied on defensively even more than Mark Edward Vlaska points. He starts like sixty percent of his shifts, I think, in the D zone. So, I mean, you have that. He's been incredibly lucky throughout his whole career. I mean, you can buy into that however much you want. But, I mean, for 735, why not? Go ahead, Kevin. Yeah, uh, when you compare it to uh, the guy, in, like, Drew, you mentioned he's more of a defensive forward at this point. So when you compare it to someone like Nick Spalling, who we let go to free agency, who still actually is unsigned, probably wanting a million and a half to two million, that's two to three times what Nieto's making. Nieto's got the speed. He's not super fast like a lot of people believe, but he is, he's he got speed. He's got the intelligence. I still want to see more offensive output, but I'm not going to complain about that contract whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of how I feel, too. You you look at what he does on the defensive end of the puck, and I think he's almost criminally underrated on the defensive end of the puck. Yeah, obviously, you know, after, you know, we kind of wanted to see him take that next step offensively, and he last year he took a step back. But when you consider the dollar amount, I mean, it, it, once Hurdle signed that deal, if I'm like Dylan DeMello and if I'm Matt Nieto, I corner him somewhere and beat the crap out of him for taking that nice deal. Um, but you know, I you know I like Nieto. He's got a, He's got a strong possession game. He's got a good. Def- he's good on the defensive end of the puck. And and you still need guys that are good on the defensive end of the puck. Um, could he you know be a little more physical? Yep, he could be absolutely. But uh, you know, I sometimes I think that uh, you know if you have the puck, then you don't need to hit anybody. And it's also like, who would you who would you be able to get in the free agent market? Who's going to fill Nieto's role for less money? Concerning the Sharks' right. cap situation, right? So. I mean, so obviously, like to me, this is a, you know, is is this a team friendly deal? I, I think it is. Uh, obviously, I mean, the, the price is less than his qualifying offer. Um, you know, I I, I don't. I guess I'm curious as to what you guys think might be the motivation. You know, is this a team-friendly deal? Is this to try and make himself a trade target because he's, you know, a guy that might be an odd guy out? What do you, What do you guys think? I'll start with you, Kev. Oh, cool. I was going to jump in anyway. Um, about the 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 trade aspect of it, I actually don't think he's a trade candidate anymore because of the deal. Because I feel like. Why would Nieto accept a low-end deal? 
if he knew he was going to be traded, but he didn't know where he was going to be traded to. Like, if, mm-hmm. if I'm Nieto and they come to me and say, hey, we're going to sign you, but we're looking to move you on elsewhere, I'd say, like, well, then pay me more so that I have some guaranteed money because I might be going from a, a cup finalist to the 29th ranked team or something like that. So well, I would you want might more get money more else. opportunity, though. I mean, if you look That's at true. it, not to, not to jump back, I mean, no. If if you look at it from from that perspective, though, you might want to take the lesser deal because it's only a one year deal, and yeah. you know, so you could go somewhere else. You're still a restricted free agent. You still have arbitration rights, and then you could you know, and then you could go to a team on the cheap that has you know a, a spot for you where you can fill in and play a more prominent role than maybe you're going to play on the Sharks when you look at some of the you know the additions to the roster like is I don't think there's a spot in the top 6 anymore for Matt Nieto with no. the Bodker signing. Right. I agree. Uh true. Anything you want to add on that? Uh you know I I used to be the whole like trade Matt Nieto thing cuz he's not doing anything and now he signs this deal and like Kevin was saying he's not really trade bait anymore and it's because with that deal, the team isn't going to want to trade him because that's a lot of bang for your buck. Yeah. And then I don't think he wants to be traded either. I mean, you just went to the Stanley Cup final. You're getting a pretty good amount of ice time considering the production that he has, and he's playing with better players than he would be anywhere else considering how deep the Sharks are. So now there's no reason to move him from the Sharks' end, and there's no reason for him to want to be moved from his end. And he's right. a Long Beach native. And he he's a Long Beach native, native, of course. Can't you know. forget that. Uh, Eric? You guys pretty much hit it on the head. It's a good deal. Um, it gives them room to maybe make a little more of a splash. Maybe that's how Michael Bodker gets here. Uh, you know, rather than maybe giving him 3.2, he gets 4 because Nieto, you know, essentially takes a pay cut. Um, it also, you know, it could also show the commitment that he has that, you know, I am, I've been here since day one of my career, I want to be here, I want to help out. Whether, whenever I need to jump up to the second line, I will. If not, I'll take a third, fourth line. I'll be happy to help out on PK. I'll happy to help out trying to get a shorthanded goal. Um, do whatever it takes. And, and that's what this team needs, is, is are guys that want to do whatever it takes. Can I jump in real quick here? Absolutely. Um, I definitely believe that both Hurdle and Nieto are signed to show me deals, as you guys mentioned. But do you think any part of this has to do with Brent Burns' contract situation going forward? And could they just be saving up money for him, or is it strictly on the players that were signed? You see, I, I, I think more for Hurdle's deal, because Hurdle's deal is longer than a year, obviously. it's a Hurdle's deal is a two-year deal, if I remember correctly. Uh, yes, two by three. Yes. Okay, yes, yeah, so two by three for Hurdle. <laughs> um, you know, Nieto, no, I mean, not so much because his, Brent Burns' salary for this year is still where it is. I mean, it doesn't increase until, you know, even if he signs an extension midseason, that extension doesn't kick in until next year. So I don't know how much Burns plays a factor into there. I think that the Burns money is going to make a very, you know, like I've said a few times now, and I'm sure I'm not alone, it's... It, the Burns money is, is going to come from uh, a Joe Thornton and Patrick Marlowe. Okay. Mm-hmm. In my opinion. I mean, you know, so I guess I guess the final question on on Matt Nieto is, are you are you surprised he didn't go to arbitration? Because I, I feel like a Matt Nieto, like, although maybe not, you know, my favorite player on the team, I, I, I like, you know, some aspects that he brings to the team. He's not my favorite player, though. But I can't help but think that he could have, you know, he could have done better in arbitration. And then what's the worst that could happen? The Sharks walk away and he becomes an unrestricted free agent. Uh, Drew? I honestly don't know why he wouldn't go to arbitration. I think it must be because he wants to play for the Sharks. He wants to win a cup with this team. Now, uh, I think we're going to jump into this in a little bit, but, you know, the Sharks are still looking for a backup goaltender if they want to look externally. So if Nieto signs for any more than that, the Sharks don't have a lot of cap space to work with. So I think it was one of those things where you're going to sign for this amount or we're just going to let you walk. Uh, Eric? Yeah, I, I agree it, it, that it's, uh, it's a cap-friendly deal for the team. Although, like Celeste was mentioning in the chat, you have a total of 28 
NHL goals, uh, like Jay Clark saying, how many were empty netters, per se, mm. uh, that, uh, you know, the, that the production hasn't been there at the moment. This is a good deal, and like we said, it's a show-me deal. Show me you want to get that million-dollar paycheck, so we'll see. But, you know, ar- arbitration isn't exactly the, the best thing for both sides. No, I, I mean, there's been, there's been, you know, there's been stories of players that have come out of an arbitration meeting in in tears. Uh, so it's obviously it's a Auntie Niemi uh, as an example, I would think. Uh, I don't remember if Niemi was listed, but I, I mean, a while back, I think it was Tommy Salo. And then I know this is going back some, but I feel like that was one that really went to went to arbitration and and really. Really, uh, really, you know, had bad, bad things for the person going in. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I, obviously, there's, there's, there's that really, really good point. Um, and just, you know, just a couple of things from the chat, quick. Uh, that you know, arbitration is obviously terrible for relationships, which we just kind of touched on. Um, you know, Sleepy Mofo. Another thing is like Nieto. Just really, I mean, if you're if you're Doug Wilson, I mean, doesn't this really? If you're if you're Tommy Wingles, is your bags not already packed? Uh, Drew. I mean, I I don't see Tommy Wingles sticking around for the whole season, honestly. Uh, so yeah, if I'm Wingles, I better start looking at new homes. <laughs> Kevin. Um. Yeah, I mean, because of his salary, I think Wingles. I still think. There's more to be had out of Wingles. It was a poor year, but the years before that weren't bad for him. So I I still believe he can do it. And if he gets traded, well, then I'll take his sticks because I scored a goal with his stick on. <laughs> so, thank you, equipment sale. Uh, Eric, anything? Yeah, I think both of them should have them packed. Uh, I, I think that a uh, deal could be imminent for somebody to get a pick out of if, you know, maybe like Sorensen or Goldolbin or, you know, I, w- I know Myers, I think, is a lot to make the team already, but, I mean, there might be somebody that's been playing in the minors or just recently coming into the organization that might be already better than them. Yeah, I mean, and that's kind of been my plank for a while now, too, is that, you know, to me... I. Timo Meyer is NHL ready now, and he can bring you everything that Tommy Wingles can bring you for less money. And you know, and and this is a guy that's obviously important going forward. Where I feel like Wingles, you know, this is obviously not a Peter DeBoer guy. His ice time has never been lower uh, on the Sharks, and you know, obviously that probably plays into production too. When your when your minutes get cut to seven, you know, seven minutes a night from ten to twelve, that's not you know that's not a good sign uh, either. Um, you know, and then you know a lot of talk about Sorensen in the chat. Yeah, Sorensen's another guy. I mean, I didn't see, but you know, I, last week on this show, you know, Kevin and Zach both sang the praises of this guy, and I trust oh, their so opinions. Good. So, I mean, there's you know, there's a lot of guys that could, you know, could come up and 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 take. I, I think easily take Wingle's spot. If there's if there's one thing the Sharks have in their system, it's it's Tommy Wingles and Spades. Um, so when you're and making two point four million dollars, that's not good for you. Go ahead, Kevin. Sorry. What I was gonna say was, with Tommy Wingles, the guy you should actually be concerned about is Ryan Carpenter, and we've talked about Ryan Carpenter's probably an AHL guy, mostly mm-hmm. AHL guy, but he has the same kind of game as Wingles, and he's far cheaper. So. If Wingle struggles again and Carpenter gets called up, Carpenter might just stick because he fills the same role. Well, and, and Jay Clark- his Twitter handle. <laughs> What's that? Love his Twitter handle. <laughs> oh, um, and you know, and Jay Clark also bring up in the chat. You know, like you could get similar play from Barclay Goudreau, also cheaper. Yeah. Um, I so I mean, it's just if you're Tommy Wingles, I mean, you're getting passed in the depth chart and you're not living up to your pay. You're you're not building up to your paycheck. I mean, Tommy Wingles at this point, in my opinion, should be a 20 goal guy at this point. I think you should. Yeah. I think that's it would be a reasonable expectation to expect about 20 goals a season out of Tommy Wingles, and nowhere close. Well, I, mean, I had him that, that last season. Sorry, Eric. 
<laughs> no, you're good. I was going to say, wasn't Tommy Wingles essentially supposed to be Jamie Re- McGinn's replacement when we traded him? Yeah. I mean, I, it, if you're you're on the bench in overtime for the Stanley Cup final, nah, it's not good. Well, you know, and that goes back to, like I said, I mean, this is a guy who has seen his ice time reduced to seven minutes a game. So obviously, you know, on top of making too much money, on top of having guys passing you in the depth chart, you're also, you know, you're also getting your own minutes shut down by the coach. So uh, that's obviously a problem. 